So when we started Lent, we started with a series called Habits. And we we're just looking at what are some of those habits that we need to do as part of our time of worship. And, and so when we think about the, the habits that we do, we think of those spiritual disciplines or those things that are part. And so that's been our series that we've been in. And so we're going to shift, we're going to use Acts 1.8, and so I invite you to, if you happen to have your Bible or your device, we're going to jump into Acts 1 and unpack that scripture when we look at what are the habits. And, and so today we're going to be looking at service, but the first week we looked at the, the habit of Sabbath or slowing. And so we tried to think through what are some of these images that we need to think through, and, and really Sabbath simply means stop. And one of the things we talked about that day was, you know, sometimes uh, if we don't take our Sabbath, Sabbaths will take us. And yet here we are in a time that we have imposed Sabbaths. We can't get out. We can't do those things. And, and so we may be giving things up for Lent. I know somebody said, well, gosh, I didn't plan to give this much up for Lent. But also looking at how do we pick things up for Lent. And so how do we take this time and use it as a spiritual practice? And so the first habit we looked at was really Sabbath and slowing. The second one was silence and solitude. And that was really the imagery of the old analog radio, of how do we tune in and fine-tune and get into the signal of God, be able to hear God's voice and, and tune in with that. And so how do we utilize this time to really tune in to the frequency of God and listen in these strange times. And then last week, we looked at the habit of worship. And, and as I shared last week, I said, you know, I, I looked at, do we, do we change the message and do different things? And the more I thought about it, the more I prayed about it is, these habits are those things that we need to do. And, and worship was one of those things that, that we are doing but we are going to do it differently. And many times we get um, connected to the, the methods of worship and we forget the object of our worship is God. The methods are going to change. And obviously uh, this week and for the next couple of weeks, maybe even months, our methods of worship are going to change. And so what does that look like for us? And so I use the imagery of a Bluetooth speaker. And the, the, the thing about a Bluetooth speaker is it's got to have power. It's got to be powered up. But there's nothing in and of itself. It's something that has to connect to another source and then amplify that source. And that's really what worship is, is that we connect to the power of the Holy Spirit and that we really connect to the frequency of God and that as we worship, we're really that conduit that God's Spirit moves in us and moves through us. And that brings us to the habit that we're looking at today, and it's the habit of service. And so when I looked at what is that, that image that we need to be thinking about, what is that picture, I, I thought of the magnifying glass, and I thought, well, that way we're looking for something and looking for ways to serve, but I quickly said it's not just passively identifying it, it's more like Inspector Gadget, that once he sees it, what is the gadget, what are, are the things that we need to be able to utilize in, in these times as we think of service. And so I want you to think of, if you remember that old cartoon, uh, I know our boys loved it. We spent time watching Inspector Gadget. There's plenty of time to watch all these classic shows now. So if you haven't watched it or watched it for a while, you can jump back in. But, but think about being like Inspector Gadget. Not only do we look for something, but then to say, what are those resources? So I'm going to use two acronyms today to help us think about the area of service. The first acronym is FANAFI. And, and so when we think about what is FANAFI, it's simply find a need and fill it. Find a need and fill it. And, and now, obviously, there's a lot of needs out there. We're limited to the ways that we can respond. But we still, how do we find that need? And then what are the resources that we have to fill it? Now, the cool thing is, as a scattered people... In different areas, literally around the, the city, the state, the world, God is able to use the church in ways that are very different. And, and maybe even God is doing a new thing to be able to find ways. We expect people to walk into our houses of worship, and yet now we're having to be able to be out and about as a scattered people, very much like the early church. And so I invite you to think through, what are those ways to find a need 
And then how are you called to fill it? A lot of times we like to phone it in. Let me let the pastor know, or let me let this team know, or let me let that know. And maybe God's saying, no, this is the time that you get to fill that need. You get to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. And so think through FANAFI. So that's one of the acronyms. And so we want to jump into the book of Acts, chapter 1. Acts is really part two of Luke's message to the church. The first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are known as the Gospels, another word for good news. Uh, but Acts is really part two, and so that's why Luke is writing. And he says, in my first book, I told you, Theophilus. The word Theophilus may actually been a person named Theophilus. It could also be called a God lover. So if it was to an individual person, it's also to those of us who call ourselves God lovers. And so in my first book, speaking of the gospel of Luke as we know it, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach. So we were able to know all about Jesus and what did Jesus do? And, and what are those things? What does it mean to be like Jesus? We, we can go to those first four books that give us a, really a biography about who Jesus is. And then he said, until that day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. So we begin to see now where the empowerment, the reason Jesus needed to leave so that the Holy Spirit would be able to come and empower the scattered people of God, we call the local church. He says, during the 40 days after he suffered, Jesus suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time. And he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive because there was a big question. Did Jesus, uh, was he alive? Did his body get stolen? And what's all of that? And so Jesus, resurrected Jesus, we were able to see him appear multiple times to prove that he actually was indeed the resurrected Jesus. And they have personal witnesses and that the accounts of that we see in the Bible. And he says, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. So when we think about service, we need to be able to think about that it's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. Many times we in the church, we good folk do good things. But we got to remember as people of God, it's not just about us doing good acts of service. Other than that, it points to us and people think we're just good people. But when we do our acts of service... It's about the kingdom. It's about how do we do the kingdom. We, we just prayed just a second ago. How do we pray thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? And so when we think about our acts of service, when we think about finding a need and filling it, we're thinking about how do we do God's kingdom work? Because ultimately, it's not just us doing good acts of service. As people of faith, as people of God... It's about how do we do those things that help build the kingdom, to bring the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. So it's about the kingdom. So the kingdom of God is not only a present reality, it's a future coming experience. But oftentimes we in the church flip it, and we think it's about this coming experience that we have to wait for. So we hurry up, we get saved, we say our prayer, we do good things, and then we just kind of hold on until we meet Jesus or Jesus comes back. But the gift is that it's a present reality as we look toward a coming future experience. So it's a both and. It's that ongoingness. Continue on to verse 4. Once, when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, so this was an ongoing message. As he spent time breaking bread, spending time fellowship, eating, spending time with them. And, and as I told you before, I sent this promise. John baptized with water. That was part of the religious experience of the Jewish faith that was then brought into the new Christian community. But in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so what we're able to see is that we don't do it alone. We've got to plug into the power source. Again, it's not just about us being good folk, doing it in our own power. But it's about doing the work of the kingdom, and it's about plugging into the power source. Very much like that Bluetooth speaker worship for us as people of faith is that reconnecting, recharging. Obviously, it's not only corporate worship, even though we're doing it with a different method now, but it's that personal private worship that we do. It's about connecting in our time, sometimes we call it about devotionals, having our time of devotions, time of quiet time with God. Whatever we may call it, that's that personal time of worship where we connect. 
we're finding new ways to do that. We're finding ways to do it differently than we had had. Thankfully, we have technology. We still have old school ways to do it. We still have paper Bibles. We still are able to go through that. But we have a number of different resources. One of the things that we're working at doing through our Facebook accounts, through our YouTube channel, are finding ways to help people plug into the power source. And so continue to check out our YouTube channel, check out our Facebook accounts through our family ministries and and other ways to be able to go, how do we help equip our people to plug into the power source, be the people of God? And so it's about how does the Holy Spirit come in and work in and through us? And then verse 8, we see, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes into your life. So it's not just for them back then, it's for us today. And so as we read that, we can claim that same promise, and we are also called to live under that same power. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes into your life. You will tell about me, speaking of Jesus, in the city of Jerusalem and all over the countries of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, the good news is we're at the ends of the earth compared to this story. But what does that look like for us? And so when we think about it, Jesus gave them a plan of growth steps. And so to think about that for us today, it's really start where you are. He's saying start where you are. Start in your Jerusalem, people like you. And so we don't have to go somewhere When we think about service, when we think about being the people of God, connecting, sharing the message, sharing the person, sharing who Jesus is, living out the power of the Spirit, bringing the kingdom of earth on heaven, start where you are. That's all we have to do. And so as we look at these really strange times we live in, start where you are. One of the things that I've been doing this week is being able to, uh, as I'm checking out, just to ask the person that's on the front line checking out. They're really in those places of danger. As Paula prayed for our healthcare professionals, they're on the area of danger. And I just said, hey, how are you doing? And, and uh, I just thank them. So there are simple things that we can do as we're still doing whatever normal is now, just simply to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, to be that presence of peace. People are acting unkind. They're acting out of fear. They're emptying shelves. You and I both walk through those places where there's empty shelves. And so start where you are. Work and just be that presence of peace the presence of Jesus, wherever you are, and just offer, hey, can I pray for you? Or just say, hey, I'm praying for you as we check out from wherever we may be checking out, still using safe protocols, still doing all of that, but being a word of care, being a word of prayer wherever we may be. And then as we get opportunity, expand to people similar to us, those expanded areas of Judea. Our our Judeas may be the surrounding outside of our neighborhood and house into those areas Uh, but people similar to us. And then Samaria. Samaria were those people that were offensive, that we would never normally go to on their own. And yet, we're called to interact with people we would not normally interact with. And so when we think about that, what what are those ways? Now, we don't start in Samaria. We don't start at the ends of the earth. We start where we are, and God begins to give us opportunities to begin to expand. So when we think about ways of service, Think about just start where you are and begin to move out in those natural places of connection. So consider this. If the gospel means good news, the first book, the gospel of Luke, we're talking about. So if the gospel means good news, then why is the world's news so bad? We know that. We're living in that. We're living in a pandemic. Some people go, it's silly. Why are we even doing this? And other people are hunkered down and living in an element of fear and everybody else in between. And so what would it take to make more good news possible? How do we bring about good news? How do we live out that good news? We get to be those agents. Now, the the cool thing that's beginning to happen is we're starting to see people post on Facebook, be able to to share in different ways, and Instagram to be able to say, hey, these are some good news. Here's something that's there. Share that. Be the good news. But it's not just about us being good folk. It's about us being empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a difference for the kingdom of God. And so in this time that there's a lot of bad news, we get to live out the good news of Jesus Christ. And so I invite you to put it into action. And so the other acronym I want to use as we wrap up our time is to let's bless others. 
So a couple of years ago, I had a chance to spend a year in training into thinking a deeper dive with the Ferguson brothers in Chicago. Uh, they started Exponential, and, and something they use at Community Christian Church is an acronym called BLESS that I think is really, really helpful. It's something that I have used. It's something that I have taught, and, and I invite you to think about how can you be a blessing. And so the simple way to do that is the B. You begin with prayer. You start God. Who am I supposed to help? Who am I supposed to serve? What need is there? So instead of just us looking, we begin with prayer and ask God to identify that need. And so we start with prayer. God, what, would is, what is it you would have for me to do? Who is it you would have for me to reach? So we begin with prayer. The second thing we do is we listen. Listen to the people around you. And so when you think about listening, one of the things that I try to do is when I'm walking through the aisles of the store is just pay attention. We're easy to get locked in and, and to just kind of get focused in what we're doing. We men are more hunters. Uh, women are more gatherers. But it's easy to kind of get locked in, get in, get out, try not to touch anybody, not let anybody touch us. But I find if I just start paying attention to the things around us, listen to the news, listen to the people around me, begin with prayer, listen, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit's going to tap us and go, hey, did you hear that? What is that? So you listen. And to listen to the people around us. God's going to identify those things. And then you eat. Jesus ate a lot with people, with people that were literally in some areas. And so when we think about how do we eat, now you say, well, we can't go out to eat anymore. Well, what are those ways to share, to break bread? Oftentimes we in the church talk about breaking bread as in Holy Communion, but really for Jesus to break bread was really just having meals, sharing a cup of coffee or, or doing the different things. And so uh, what are those ways that we can share meals together, create connection? Some of the people are doing it outside windows in healthcare facilities, some people are FaceTiming or Zooming and sharing a meal together uh, while the, the device, the iPad, the tablet, the computer, the phone is set up. And while we're isolated in our rooms, in our houses, how do we log on and share with somebody else and share meals together? Share different things together. Just because we're, we're to be practicing good social isolation and we're quarantined to some level, what are those unique ways that we can begin to share meals? How do we appropriately connect with our neighbors that are hunkered in and to be able to share for them? And so we begin with prayer. We listen to the people around us and we eat. We share meals. And, and then you'll notice that's when we begin to serve. So we don't jump into, hey, I'm going to serve. No, we, then we begin to go, what are the places that we can serve with people around us? Start where you are, and God will give us opportunities to expand from there. And, and so it comes out of relationship with God, it comes out of relationship with others, and it comes from really building those connecting moments and then finding those ways to serve. And then here's the cool piece, because we're called to be witnesses, so we're not just giving good product, we're not just giving good service, we're sharing a person, and that person is Jesus. And it's in those moments that then we're able to share our story of faith. And so as we're called to be witnesses, the other pieces are those ways to build those connections. So we begin with prayer, listen to the people around us, eat, share meals, serve in places with people around us. And then all of a sudden, it's like, why are you doing this? And we're able to begin to share because of our person of faith. We're able to share that we're able to do this because the Holy Spirit has moved in us. You know, one of the things that we can do when we have spiritual conversations like this is, well, I, I heard a message this past week on Sunday that talked about service, and, and this is just a way to be able to, to serve in this time. We love God. We love other people. So how do we serve in very practical ways? And so we cannot do everything, but we can do something. And we do it when we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, and we do it when it's right the right kingdom thing. And so we, we can't do everything, but when we have the body of Christ doing this, not just the people that are connected to this congregation, but the people of God all over the place. Can you imagine what begins to happen? And all of a sudden, a lot of bad news turns into good news because it's about the kingdom, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, using you and I right wherever we are. So a couple of questions I want to ask as you think through this week, as you get ready to move in. How will you find a need and fill it? What are those ways that you're going to do that? 
And so we gave you a simple process to be able to do that. And so how will you bless? How will you begin to just begin with prayer? That time of worship, tuning into God's frequency, pausing and stopping. And so continue to live out those practices, those habits, if you will. And then the habit this week that I want you to take some time to explore is how will you find a need and fill it? How will you bless those around you? Start where you are. Begin with prayer. God's going to move in you and through you to make a difference. Let's pause for a moment of prayer. God, we thank you. We thank you that you move in so many different ways. And that while we pray, sometimes we wonder if you listen. We wonder how those prayers will be answered. And Lord, sometimes you move in supernatural ways, and we're so grateful for that. But Lord, sometimes you move in natural ways, using us right where we are. And so Lord, in these strange and unique times that we're in, move in us, move through us. Help us tune into your frequency so that when we pray, we'll know and that you'll give us the strategy, you'll give us the opportunity. So, Lord, just be with everybody here that's listening today. Be with those that may uh, tune into this a little later, that you'll just prompt us that we can be your hands, and we can be your feet. We can be your words of encouragement to share the good news, and that as we are able to connect with others, Lord, that your spirit goes before us, meets us there, and leads us on. Lord, thank you. Continue to hold us and be with us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I am yours, set apart for you. I am yours, hungry for your truth. Take my life, you are all I live for. I am yours, set apart. Well, hey, I want to say thank you to our team that's gathered here. Uh, they've been able to work really hard, and we want to provide a space to be able to gather virtually in our virtual houses of worship for this time. But as I share every week, we've been gathered, but now it's time to be scattered and to live as scattered people, and we are, to make a difference for the sake of the kingdom of God. Thanks for gathering with us. Check out our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, for other ways to continue to grow Know that we continue to pray with you, pray for you. Let us know how we can continue to be there. Thanks for coming out. Be the church as we continue to find a need, fill it, empowered by the Spirit, making a difference for the kingdom of God. Have a blessed day, have a blessed week, and be a blessing to those around you. Thanks for coming out.